So this is how I use Ozone for mastering. Uh, what I've done is I've I open a new uh, logic project and I completely blank. I just add in the audio track. I what I did was I went to file, import, and I chose audio file, and then I navigated to where this unmastered file is of a piano track. And then the first thing that I do is before even ins I don't even need to insert Ozone yet. The first thing that I do is I double click this in Logic and click File. And if you don't see File here, all you have to do is go to Logic, Preferences, Advanced Tools, and you just have to say uh, choose Enable All, and that will make this File tab appear here. So it starts out defaulted on track when I uh, when I double clicked on this it opened up like that so I just click on file and then from functions I choose um, search peak but to make it easier before I do that I want to change the the part of the peak that I'm gonna see will be indicated by the bars number or beats so I switch that to this view and if I move these down it's more like that um, so I go to functions, search peak, and the peak of the whole tune, meaning the highest peak, is um, right around 15, just after 15. So really what we can do is we can just go to um, measure 15, uh, which will be right there. And actually, see how when I put the cursor there on 15, that it showed up right before the peak point of the whole of the whole track. So this is the best part to have Ozone analyze and uh, use Mastering Assistant from. So I go to Ozone 9. Uh, I'm opening it from here, Stereo. If you've never opened it before, go down to Audio Units on Logic and uh, Isotope and Ozone 9, Stereo. And the first thing I'm going to do is click Master Assistant. For some reason, I've found sometimes I feel like I get better results when I X out all of this stuff to start, like just to make sure that it's going to complete, complete, clean start. But I may be just imagining that. Anyway, so I click Mastering Assistant, and I'm going to show how powerful just the manual uh, mode is. Um, the, the other thing I should mention, though, before I do this, I have to go back a little bit. Once I've set that peak point, I sometimes like to play it. Um, I'm going to actually kind of make a little temporary marker. I mean, a little line right there where that is, that point, just so I can come back to it easily. But um, sometimes what I do is I just, with ozone off, I just play it from this point, right from this point here, play a little bit, and watch these numbers to the right. This uh, peak level. And the only reason I like to do that is um, because if I see that the number, like this is very low um, peak, it was the highest peak was only like minus 11, just the way I naturally exported um, the, the unmastered mix. But if this was something uh, fairly high, like if it came to anything above minus 6, like maybe minus maybe zero or minus three or minus four or anything like that, then what I would do is I would add that minus amount to this one and go down uh, below it so it at least adds up to minus six. Um, in other words, if this was peaking at minus four, then I would set this one right here. I would double click in it and just put minus two so that when it peaks at the peak point unmastered, that it would be at least minus six, but this one is so um, such a low peak level that I don't even need to do that. Um, so anyway, now going back to ozone, I put this at the starting point of fifteen, and on ozone I you choose master assistant manual, and I like the medium level for. Um, like instrumental music. I'm sure that some pop music might experiment with high and I don't want to go too low so um, I want a medium level of standard overall loudness so 
Vintage is also a very interesting setting, but for this I'm just going to try Modern. And I like to keep it on streaming because I'm really going to target streaming services, and I'll talk about that later. So then what I do is I, I press Next, and it's waiting for me to play the audio from that highest peak point. So I start the audio. And then I clicked accept um, to accept the settings that it came up with. Now there's all sorts of other things that you could do after that fact, like you could start to um, add in these other widgets that are available with the plus sign. And I actually might go into that a little bit later, but first I'm just going to talk about working with that raw um, starting point that where it adjusted the sound. Um, the Isotope team customer support describes this as a, only a starting point, but I have to admit, this is a, quite a starting point. I mean, for me, sometimes this really works um, even as a final um, sound. It's really impressive what this software does. But the next step is to target a loudness level, and I'm going to do that with the Learn Threshold and this goes for an overall loudness standard that is related to something called LUFS that um, Spotify and all the streaming services go by. Spotify goes for minus 14 and all the rest of the streaming services like Apple, Pandora uh, and everything else, they the rest all go for minus 16. In today's example I'm going to target, I'm just gonna double click in there and type in minus 15 as kind of a compromise and uh, I won't go into LUFS and what it's all about. You can look that up separately, but um, I will try applying this um, to this uh, target overall loudness level. And what you want to do is make sure that true peak is set, should show as minus one for streaming, and it should show true peak blue. If, I, if you see it like this, I would recommend changing it to blue. Um, and this should be turned blue when you're about to learn, which means you're going to play this song all the way through. When it plays through, it's uh, actually going to start moving the, the threshold bottom point a little bit around. It might usually will just go upward up until a certain point. And notice this was sliding down so. I really want that to stay at one. Whoops. Maybe I just need to take that off first. Okay. So to start learning, you just have to play from the beginning of the track to the end of the track. So that means that if you have programmed in a fade towards the end of the track here, um, uh, which I can demonstrate really fast. All right. So now I'm going to go to the end point and just put in a fade, which I like to do on Logic just this way. There's lots of different ways to do it, and there's none of them are you know more right than the other, but this is the way I like to do it. Um, I might put in something like 10,000 and see about how far that goes, and uh, then I might curve it upward like that, or if I had moved this curve the other way, I could curve it that way, but I would like for this particular example just to go in that direction and there's the fade out sounds like this even with ozone on it all right what was that last noise <laughs> kind of had like a little um Probably when I picked up the pedal of the piano, that noise. So I'm going to just actually redo this and cut the tune off right 
here. I'm going to delete that, retype the fade. I'm just going to make it a little bit less now. You have to click on this to make that fade come in there. Then I'm going to curve it up again. Okay, that was much better. Anyway, um, back to here. What you want to do is make sure this is blue, rewind to the beginning of the song, and press play. And I'm going to play through the whole song, but I'm going to edit that out of this video. So at the beginning, just watch the threshold when it moves up a bit, the threshold at the bottom here. And this is when it's learning to target minus 15 LUFS in this example. And when it finishes, very close to after it finished, when it reaches a certain point like that, um, just click that blue off. And that now is, it's not locking it into this position, but you might as well at that point, um, you know, either make note of it or just to be easier, just save it right there as a preset, just to hold that position of one at, at the top and 12.7, minus 12.7. Um, and then uh, another thing I want to mention too is that that whole targeting process you could also do it um, with more stereo independence and that would be by unclicking this linked uh, transient and basically unclicking it and the way to bring out the full um, stereo independence is you bring these up to 100 percent and then you press learn threshold and um, then you replay, you know, you play the song from beginning to end and then you un uh, press this so that it's not blue anymore. I actually like this one that it had exactly as it was with the linked sound. The linked sound, sound is still in stereo, but it's just, um, it's not as independent on the stereo sound. And so everything is um, compressed all at once as stereo, rather than kind of independently right and left channel um, for that total loudness of minus 15. So um, the next thing I was going to say is that it could be fun to play with some widgets here. And for example, uh, as it is playing, you could try some additional um, uh, of these widgets. So for example, uh, the exciter, always bring that widget to before the maximizer. And then what I recommend is trying some of its presets here. So for example, it says accent stereo effects. So let's just try that out for a moment here. That was without, and now let's press it. Oops, now it's pressed. I'm just 
trying some different ones. Sometimes you'll notice a profound difference and sometimes you'll just notice subtle differences. So anyway, I'm going to remove that, but I would suggest, you know, trying out some of these different presets and and bringing them before the maximizer and then um, checking out uh, different, you know, uh, presets within these widgets um, to s just pressing on them and seeing if you like the sound, if you start to like the sound better. And then after you find a combination of widgets that have added up to like an overall sound that you love, um, and if you're great at tweaking <laughs> the fine fine tuning the sections of these presets, then all you know more power to you. But um, anyway, I would recommend playing around with the different presets, trying different things. And after you find the combination of widgets that you love, then go back to the maximizer and relearn the threshold by playing through all the song while this is blue um, and that will get you the correct new targeted um, LUFS uh, based on the number that you've put here it may or may not adjust this threshold point I think it really depends on what kinds of widgets you use and how you use them so that's pretty much it and then when you're done um, all you do is with ozone still on um, you just click once on your logic file that gives the start and end points and you bounce project or section and then you just uh, if you want a 24-bit master just keep it like that if you want a 16-bit I recommend dithering with UV22HR and click OK and then give it a file name and uh, notice that you can also export a dot mp3 at the same time it's pretty cool okay there you have it